This is the air bearing rig which works on the principle of aerodynamic lubrication. It has a shaft and the bearing part. Both shaft and bearing inner surfaces are cleaned properly to avoid any scratching by dust particles. The loading on the bearing can be changed using this spring balance. The own weight of the bearing is about 4 kg and by turning the spring balance screw we can reduce the load by basically lifting the bearing. There are local pressure measuring taps all around the circumference of the bearing. The individual pressure taps are then connected to the manometers partly filled with mercury. There are total 18 pressure taps designated as 1, 2, 3, etc. When the shaft is not rotating, then the pressure shown for each pressure tap is the atmospheric pressure, about 45 mm on this manometer. The RPM of the shaft is measured by a tachometer. The shaft is rotated by a motor with pulley arrangement. The RPM of the motor is controlled by a controller. At a static condition of the shaft, the manometer shows the atmospheric pressure at 45 mm for all the pressure taps. As we start the motor which rotates the shaft, because of the small clearance between the shaft and the bearing, aerodynamic pressure is generated. The pressure at different points on the bearing circumference is then seen in the manometer. The pressure changes with the location of the pressure tab. The principle of aerodynamic bearing is same as that of hydrodynamic lubrication with the difference that air instead of oil is used as the lubricant. Air or any gas is highly compressible fluid whereas oil and other liquids are considered as incompressible. So let me tell you about air bearing. <clears throat> So I will explain the very basic principle of air bearing. So in this case, we are dealing with aerodynamic journal bearing. So there are many types of air bearings, but in our case, we are dealing with aerodynamic journal bearings. The principle of aerodynamic journal bearing is similar to the hydrodynamic bearing. Hydrodynamic journal bearing. <clears throat> so the only difference is in this case we will use any gas or air Whereas in this case, we will use a liquid, normally an oil. So the difference will be that gas or air is compressible fluid, whereas liquid or oil is considered as incompressible fluid. So this kind of bearings are encountered in many machines. So for example, So in this case, this is the shaft and this is the bearing. So this kind of bearings, in this kind of bearings, the, the load may be applied on the shaft or also it is possible that the load is applied on, on the bearing themselves. So either way, there is going to be a load bearing action happening. So if we look at the side view, so in the side view you will see this as the shaft and this as the bearing. Now the clearance between the shaft and the bearing 
is very very small. Here I have shown you little bit exaggerated way, but this will be only in the range of tens of microns. So very small gap generally, and this in this gap liquid or air the lubricant is filled. So I will explain the principle of uh, <coughs> journal bedding. So for example, this is the bearing. And this is the shaft. So if we fill this with lubricant, whether air or liquid, and these two circles are concentric to each other. So this one is shaft and this is the bearing. This is also known as journal. That's why the name journal bearing. So in a normal case, you would assume that these two, the journal and the bearing will be concentric to each other. So their centers will fall on the same point and there will be lubricant all around. But in reality, what happens is that because there is a load application, whether we apply the load on the bearing or on the shaft, if we apply load on the shaft, then this shaft will go down. Or if we apply the load on the bearing, then this bearing will go down and eventually they will contract with each other. So initially the center was here, the center of the center of the bearing is here, but the center of the shaft or the journal is here. So they are vertically down. So this is the difference. So this is also known as eccentricity. So in this case, this is the maximum that the difference we can see between the two centers. So this is called clearance. So this will be the static position. That means when we apply the load, there will be contact between the journal and the bearing. So therefore, now if we start the shaft, if we rotate the shaft in this manner, then there will be sliding between the two surfaces. So there will be dry sliding because here the liquid has been squeezed out. There is no liquid here. So therefore there will be sliding. But as we increase the speed, so if omega is the rotational speed, as we increase the speed, what will happen is this is filled with liquid. So the liquid will be pushed in this gap. So this is a convergent gap. So the liquid will be pushed. It will be dragged inside. And because of this, a pressure will be built up. So this pressure will be built up here. And because of this pressure, which is known as hydrodynamic pressure, the load will be supported. So if W is the load here, so the bearing load will be supported by this pressure. And in that situation, there will be a small gap between the two. So that means the liquid will start flowing in this way, along with the shaft. And this is how the hydrodynamic pressure is built up. And this pressure will take the load, the bearing load. However, the position of this, the minimum, the position of the minimum gap between the two will not be here. It will shift to this, to, to the left this way.
So this minimum will be here. And originally, C prime is the center of the bearing and the center of the journal will be here. And however, the application of load is here. So the load application direction is this one and center to center the distance the direction of the center to center is this one so this angle is known as attitude angle and this is the the minimum minimum gap so obviously opposite to here we will have the maximum gap so from the maximum gap we measure the angle in the anti clockwise direction and we call this angle as theta and this gap is known as eccentricity so the value of e the maximum value of e will be c when these two will touch each other otherwise it is eccentricity now in the case of incompressible liquid the position of this the minimum will always be at this point So that means the attitude angle phi will be 90 degree. So this happens with incompressible liquids. So the attitude angle is always 90. And in that case again the maximum gap will be on this side and we will measure theta anti-clockwise from here so this is for a liquid incompressible liquid In the case of gas, which is compressible fluid, so because the gas is compressible, in this case, what will happen is the minimum will occur here. So, again, the attitude angle will be zero here in this case because the center to center line and the load line are coinciding with each other so this is the situation of compressible liquid fluid highly compressible fluid in this case the attitude angle is zero and we look, if we look at the pressure profile so the pressure pro profile for liquid so pre pressure profile means how the pressure is changing at each point as we go from theta equal to zero and as we go from here to here and then again go back to here so we always start measuring from the maximum gap here which is theta equal to zero and from here we measure to this will be pi and then again going back here will be 2 pi 
So this is how we measure the angle and what is the pressure. So normalized pressure, that means pressure divided by uh, the atmospheric pressure is so theta pi and 2 pi. So we are going from here and going all the way to here. So obviously the, obviously the pressure is building up, the pressure is large here and pressure is low here. So in this case, the pressure profile will look something like this. That means starting from here, the pressure is very low and as we increase theta, the pressure will increase, but the pressure, the maximum pressure will not be here, but slightly before this. So the maximum pressure will occur in the second quadrant. So this is the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So the maximum pressure will happen here. After that, it goes, pressure decreases and it goes in the negative side. That means there will be uh, low pressure here. But actually in the, in the case of liquid, since the liquids cannot sustain low pressure, so in that case, <coughs> cavitation will take place. That means there will be formation of uh, bubbles here and this pressure may not be realized. So this is a theoretical value, but on this side, the pressure will increase. So all the load of the bearing will be taken by this pressure rise. And in the case of highly compressible fluid or gas, pressure profile looks like this. So it is symmetrical to the minimum gap between the two. So in our case, we have air as the liquid, the lubricant. So in this case, we will see something like this. So if we measure pressure at different points, so if we measure pressure at different points, so we will see the profile of the of the pressure and the compressibility actually depends on many factors which is that known as compressi compressibility ratio where mu is the viscosity of the fluid u is the surface velocity the relative surface velocity of the shaft, R is the radius of the bearing, PA is the atmospheric pressure and C is the, the clearance between the two. So and this one is for lambda equal to infinity and this is lambda equal to zero. So this value lambda depends on many factors, including the viscosity and the radius, the surface speed, and so on. So in our case, we are we do not know the viscosity of air. So we will see the pressure profile, which is something between the two. So we will see a prof pressure profile, which is goes to higher value and comes down so in our experiment 
we will observe this kind of pressure profile. This part is the bearing and we have the journal here and in the bearing there are many holes. Through these holes we have got pressure taps. So the, the lubricant which is air in our case is all around this area. So this area is filled with air. And since the shaft is moving in this direction, that means the air is being pushed in this convergent gap here. So the air is being pushed here and this part is the divergent. So because of this, the dynamic action, the pressure will be increasing as we go to the, the least, to the minimum gap here. So we have pressure taps at these points. So one, two, three, and until 18 here. So at these pressure taps, we will measure the pressure because this is the hole and air will pass through this and this is connected to the manometer. So similarly at all pressure taps we will be able to measure. So what we will measure is this is the low pressure area. So from low pressure the pressure will keep increasing until it achieves a very maximum value and again the pressure will go down as we go this one. So this is what we will see in our experiments. Let us start. Now reading is around 3000. Around 3500. Now I am changing it to almost 7000 Now the shaft is rotating at about 9000 rpm. From the pressure taps, the journal bearing air is being fed into the manometer tubes through the small holes in the bearing. We can see the formation of some kind of pressure profile in the bearing. If the pressure in the pressure tap is high, then the mercury dips for that tube because the air pushes the mercury down. 
and if the pressure in the pressure tap is low then the mercury rises in that tube. This pressure profile we are seeing for nearly no load in the bearing because the spring balance has actually lifted the bearing by 4 kg which is the same as the weight of the bearing. So the bearing is not giving any load to the journal. This is the kind of pressure profile we can see inside this bearing for very light to no load situation. High pressure. Low pressure. Now we have increased the RPM of the shaft to 10,000. Releasing some load on the spring balance means we are lowering the bearing. In other words, the load is being applied to the bearing. Now we have brought the load on the bearing to 2 kg. This means that the pressure in the bearing will rise. Hence we will see the dip in the mercury in the high pressure tap and rise in the mercury in the low pressure tap. We observe that the local pressure in the pressure tap number 5 or 6 is the highest and in the pressure tap 14 and 15 is the lowest. Now we will bring the load on the spring balance to zero. This means that the bearing is applying its full weight of 4 kg to the shaft. In other words, the bearing load is 4 kg. Because of the increased bearing load, the bearing pressure will rise further to balance the load for load bearing. Now we see that in the high pressure taps the mercury has dipped further down. In the low pressure tap the mercury has risen to a high value. Thus this experiment demonstrates that as we increase the speed of the shaft or increase the bearing load the pressure in the high pressure region rises. Safe, no, 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 no,
Because it takes some time for mercury to move in the tube and the reservoir, the pressure profile takes time to build in this experiment. However, the pressure inside the air bearing changes as we change the shaft speed or the bearing load. High bearing load increases the eccentricity of the journal bearing and increases the load carrying capacity. Now this rig has achieved the full pressure profile as it exists in the journal bearing. Now let me summarize this experimental demonstration. Air bearing based on the aerodynamic journal bearing principle was shown in this demonstration. The location of the minimum film thickness is decided by the fluid compressibility number which depends upon the fluid viscosity at the prevailing temperature, sliding speed and many other parameters. Pressure profile of rising local pressure is seen as we go from the maximum pressure film thickness to the minimum film thickness in the direction of shaft rotation. The maximum pressure is seen just before the minimum film thickness location in the converging flow side. Pressure goes below the atmospheric pressure in the diverging side after the minimum film thickness location.